Now let's talk about API management metrics. And metrics is a really nice way to help you to understand the health of your APIs in the API management. And in this lecture, we are going to focus primarily on two key metrics, capacity metric and requests metric. So let's start with the capacity metric. And capacity metric helps you to determine whether you need to upgrade or downgrade the tier of your API management. For example, you might be on a high tier API management instance, but in reality, you are receiving a little number of requests every second. And in this case, it will make more sense if you downgrade the tier of your API management to make it more cost effective. And on the other side, you might have a really low tier API management instance and you are receiving an overwhelming number of requests. And in this case, it will make more sense if you upgrade the tier of your API management to accommodate to the number of requests you are receiving. So capacity metric is the one metric to go to know whether your API management is on the right tier or not, and whether you have the sufficient number of instances deployed for your API management. And then you can take it to the next step and either increase the number of instances or reduce the number of API management instances. And if you are into DevOps, you can watch the capacity metric and see how it goes. And then you can automate the allocation and the deallocation of extra instances for your API management. Now let's have a look at this graph here. And as you can see here, the maximum capacity usage for this API management is 5.5%, which is quite low, isn't it? But don't make this trick you, because this view only covers the last 24 hours. And if we expand it to cover the last 30 days, we will see that the capacity has reached up to 40% at a certain point when we have been using too many requests for our API management. So before you go ahead and measure the capacity of your API metric, it's very important that you select the right time range for your API management. One day you want to be realistic to measure the capacity of your API because the usage can be different over the week and the weekend, day and night, and different criteria. And it's important to put all of these into consideration when you measure the capacity of your API management. Now that's enough for the capacity metric. Now let's go to the requests metric. And the requests metric shows you the number of requests that your API management has received. Whether those requests are successful or not successful, all of these requests are captured under the requests metric. Now let's go ahead and add a filter and let's add the backend response code. This is the response code of the backend Azure function. And let's filter the value. Probably let's go ahead and increase the time range a little bit to have more uh, response codes. And then let's select 500 and it's going to update the chart to get the 500 response code from the backend Azure function. And you're also able to get the backend response code category. Instead of being very specific about which response code you want to receive, you are able to get the category of the response code, whether it's a client side error or server side error or whatever it is. So for example, if you are going to select 5xx, it's going to return all 500 uh, response code that's been returned from the backend Azure functions. And also you are able to do the same for the gateway response code, either to get it very specific response code for the gateway or to get the category of the gateway response code as well. Also are able to filter out by the host name uh, of your API management in addition to the last error seen for your API management, whether it's operation not found or any different kind of error that might get raised in your API management, you are able to filter out by selecting these values. And also finally, the location of your API management. In case you have deployed multiple instances for your API management, you are able to see the metric for a specific instance. But in our case, we have only one instance because we have a dev tier, so we can only select Australia East region. And to get the most use of the metrics, you need to combine it with alerts. And this is what we are going to do in the next lecture. We are going to see how we can create alerts that it's going to notify certain team members when a certain metric has been triggered. 
That's it for this lecture, I hope you enjoyed it and please feel free to join me in the next lecture.